Don't you just uh, see, the, you know, as we are in the world and, and at grocery stores, and Dory and I saw uh, the movie uh, The Shack. We couldn't wait to see it just to form our own. Dory read the book. A handful of you read the book The Shack. It's kind of interesting. William Young, who wrote it, went through unbelievable sorrow and difficulty as a young person. And the, the person that he depicts in the, in the movie, Mackenzie, this is all on here. Dory, I'm not spoiling. Just doing little stuff on, that's on the book. The lead character was abused. So God appears to him as a mother figure, as a woman instead of as a fatherly kind of a thing. And this is acceptable to him. And he's absorbing it. He's able to take it in. So it's interesting. You have to kind of adjust yourself as you're watching the movie. And Dory read the book. I, I did not. So we're going to be referring to this. Dory was battling coughing through the movie. The place was packed. And I was sitting there battling, wailing from crying <laughs> because it was just hitting me in the spirit so much. At times, you go, <gasps> it would start to, and it's like, Dory said, I'm not going to take you out. You know? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. You know, control yourself here. But there's, this t there's two or three movies that just make me cry. And it's because it's the healing, cleansing rivers. It's not sadness. It's joy in the spirit. Oh, I found the source of living water. I found springs of living water. And you drink in in your soul. You, you, the tears start to come. And I love Bruce Coburn's song, who William Young quotes Bruce Coburn, I don't know, about 10 times in the book, uh, Canadian songwriter. Bruce Coburn, one of my favorite lyrics on his albums is, Tears can sing, enjoy shed tears. And for me, the witness of the Holy Spirit, when the witness of the Holy Spirit is strong in me, I cry. I can't help it. That's what it means for me. And if I'm sad, you know, cry tears of sadness. But it, sometimes I can be joyful and the tears just, you know, just, I, I don't, I don't want to hinder it. I don't want to quench it. But let, let the Holy Spirit flow and have his way in me and say, green light, green light. I always give the Lord green light, green light, green light, green light. I'm going to write a song, green light for children. Green light, Jesus, you always have my green light. Always go, 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 go. Whenever the Spirit is moving, go, 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 go. I want to, and brothers and sisters, how many of you can see in your spirit all of the wounded people? Well, sometimes when I get in, into the building in the evenings, we have Alcoholics Anonymous, we have Narcotics Anonymous, and we have uh, Al-Anon, uh, a recovery group for those who have lived with people who are alcoholics. Al-Anon, you've heard of that group too. So there's three anonymous groups that meet. And how many of you believe God is healing them? You know, the, through the sorrows and tragedies of life, God is healing people. God is relevant. God is there. But uh, th these servant songs, next week we're going we're gonna to take at least two parts for the, the, the servant song that we call Isaiah 53. How many of you ring a, uh, Isaiah 53 rings a bell with you? That's technically what's called the fourth servant song. We're looking at what is called the th third servant song today. There are four of them, and this is the third one. These are Mount Everett passages in the book of Isaiah that show us Jesus before he comes. They're magnificent. I've feasted on them for uh, over 30 years in my life. When I was at North Central Bible College, I stumbled across a book in a bookstore on the servant songs of the book of Isaiah, a little book, InterVarsity Press, and uh, held on to it for two years before I read it, and then devoured it. And it's something happened in my soul. So I, every now and then, come back to the servant songs. But if you, let's turn to the third servant song, Isaiah chapter 50. Again, these are prophetic passages that speak about Jesus and speak always of our healing. So if you would stand with me, please turn to Isaiah chapter 50. This is the third servant song. You don't want to lose the context here. The context is always important, but the book of Isaiah speaks to us of the coming of the Lord in so many ways. Jesus picked up the book of Isaiah and that awesome day in Nazareth and quoted from Isaiah 61 and said, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. 
but he knew the book of Isaiah very, very well. And Jesus probably derived the, his identity, who he was, from the book of Isaiah and the Holy Spirit. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. Follow with me if you have an NIV. The sovereign Lord has given me an instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning. He wakens my ear. Hold on to your ear for a second. He, say, he wakens my ear to listen like one being taught. The sovereign Lord has opened my ears, and I have not been rebellious. I have not drawn back from him. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint. I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is so close. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the sovereign Lord who helps me. Who is he that will condemn me? They will all wear out like a garment. The moths will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the word of his servant? Let him who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God. Let me read that again. Let him who walks in this dark world, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God. Abba, Father, we lift up our hearts to you, Lord. Thank you for this little gathering of precious people. Lord, empower us, release more of your spirit to us, Lord, to make us strong for the days ahead. Make us strong for the challenges of the hour. Lord, to reach this world, Lord, all the anonymous people. Let them be found and let them be healed. Raise up a church on the North Shore that will be ignited with a passion and love for Jesus and a passion to reach the lost ones. For in Jesus' precious name we pray. And everyone said amen. Amen, amen. Uh, be seated and relax. Just retracting a little bit. Dory and I saw the first night the movie, The Shack. The book, of course, was written by, we do have an extra book here. We have another one downstairs if anyone wants to read it. Um, uh, he was born, William P. Young, the author of the book, was born a Canadian and raised amongst a Stone Age tribe by his missionary parents. He's a missionary's kid in New Guinea. He himself suffered great loss of loved ones and as, as a child and as an adult. He knows the struggle to believe and trust in God as a missionary's kid. Also as a young Christian adult struggling with issues in his life like where's God when it hurts. Eugene Peterson, the author of The Message. How many of you have any of The Message? New Testament, Old Testament, and d different things. The, the Message, he writes, and I quote, when the imagination of a writer and the passion of a theologian cross-fertilize, the result is a novel on the order of the shack. This book, Eugene Peterson said, has the potential to do for our generation what John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress did for his. Amazing. Winona Judd, how many of you know Winona Judd, the country western rock singer? Country western and rock, it all comes together to be one nowadays. You know, it's hard to distinguish what's what. Rock and country western. But Winona Judd says, I read The Shack during a very difficult transition in my life. This story has blown the door wide open to my soul. The story is about Mackenzie Phillips' youngest daughter. I'm just reading from the back here, quoting from the notes on the back of the book. I'm not trying to be the spoiler. Um, the story is about a man by the name of Mackenzie Phillips, whose youngest daughter, Missy, has been apparently abducted 
during a family vacation, and there is evidence that she may have been, may have been brutally murdered. A crisis beyond imagination and a crucible that few will experience ensues in the book. Quote, in a world where religion seems to grow increasingly irrelevant at times, the book wrestles in the movie, wrestles with the timeless question, where is God in a world so filled with unspeakable pain? How many of you have ever asked that question? You know, where is God in a world so filled with unspeakable pain? Jesus, of course, is the answer. Jesus bears our pains. He carries our sorrows. He is there. He is with us. He will never, never leave us. These servant songs, hidden, if you will, in the book of Isaiah, reveal Jesus to us in the crises, in the crucibles of life. There is a unique phrase here in this uh, compound name for God that's used four times. And it's actually used over 220 times in the Hebrew Bible, that what we call the Old Testament. And it's the compound name for God. If you look in your Bibles there, so important, brothers and sisters. A lot of people try to read through the Bible in a year. And that, that's good and, and noble. But believe me, uh, when you race through the Bible, you're not prone to get a whole lot out of it sometimes. And it's more important to take, allow one thing to get into your soul that you go to. A, one of my favorite verses, and you know it, God is a refuge, a strength, an ever-present help in time of trouble. God rivets that word in my soul it's over and over and over again. It's a life verse for me, Psalm 46, verse 1. And I trust that you have been given by the Spirit of God word, a word, many words. But the names of God are precious in Scripture. How God is referred to in many different ways. He has a variety of different names. Elohim, and translated as God. Yahweh, which has no consonants. It's all vowels. We have no idea how to pronounce it. It's kind of a swirling of the wind. Yahweh. The translation has been totally, completely lost. But this first word here in verse 4, the sovereign Lord, over 220 times in the Hebrew Bible, sovereign Lord is used. And it's what's called a compound name for God. In Hebrew, it's Adonai. Yahweh, Adonai, Yahweh. So the NIV brings it out and translates it. I, I, I wish that they would just put Adonai, Yahweh there. <laughs> that would be nice. But the name is so important because later on in this passage, it says in verse 10, trust in the name. Look at verse 10 of Isaiah 50. Let him who walks in the dark who has no light this world. Trust in the name. So understanding the name of who God is should keep you from falling asleep and should keep you awake in times of difficulty and challenge. Let him trust in the name. So this name, Sovereign Lord, is a key to understanding this passage because it's used four times in this little flow. It's used by Ezekiel over and over and over and over and over again in the trials of Ezekiel's life. It's used by the prophet Isaiah. It's used by Jeremiah. It's, it's used the first time it's used in the scripture. Turn with me if you have your Bibles there. I trust you're a good student of the Bible. You're not going to fall asleep on me while we're preaching here. Genesis 15, 2 is the first time Yahweh Adonai is used. In Marv Wilson's wonderful book, which I was reading yesterday, this is his second book called Exploring Our Hebrew Heritage. He has a section in here called Names We Can Trust. Names We Can Trust. The Jewish people hearken to the name. The name Yahweh is not pronounceable in Jewish synagogues. If a rabbi or a conservative Jew pronounces the name 
Yahweh. They're out of the synagogue. They're gone. You cannot pronounce the name. You can substitute Adonai if you see Yahweh. But you cannot speak the word Yahweh. It's too holy and it's unpronounceable. Nobody knows the actual pronunciation. And we are given this privilege. The first time it's used is in Genesis 51. After the word, after the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, the Lord said, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abraham said, Oh, sovereign Lord, Adonai Yahweh, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus? God speaks this wonderful word to him, but he says, don't you understand? There's a void in my life. There's a hole in my life. I don't even have a child. What's wrong here? God was speaking wonderful theological platitudes to him, but he says, I've got a personal need here. I've got a pain. I've got a sorrow. I've got something missing in my life, and I believe you're part of the problem, God. That's what Abraham is saying. But he says, oh, sovereign Lord. And it says in verse 8 as well, oh, sovereign Lord, once again, he cries out to the Lord. The relationship Abraham's life is characterized by trusting and believing God. Trusting and believing God. It's his true worship. How many of you know you can worship and sing songs, but when you get down, back down to earth level, if you are actually trusting the Lord, it will be demonstrated by the way you live. Not by the songs you sang. You can sing wonderful songs, right? How many of you know you can sing great songs but not live it out? But true worship means trusting the Lord. Adonai Yahweh here, used throughout the Bible, is a compound name for God. The almighty eternal God personally revealing himself in the redemption of mankind, in the meeting of man's needs, who is able and willing to deliver and save us. Moses hearkened to the Lord. David, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel find Adonai Yahweh to be available and present, to be trusted and to be obeyed. A name we can trust draw close to. And here we see in this beautiful servant song, this beautiful phrase, this one who Abraham has cried out to, the prophets, Isaiah, Adonai Yahweh has given to me an instructed tongue. Here's Jesus speaking, really. It's Jesus. is the key to Jesus. Yahweh Adonai has given to Jesus an instructed tongue. An instructed tongue is so important. Sovereign Lord gives us things. Jesus, with this instructed tongue to know the word that will sustain weary people. How many of you have ever been sustained by the word that comes from Jesus' mouth? How many of you have ever been sustained by a word that comes from Scripture? How many of you have ever been spoken to by the words of Jesus? It is a word that sustains weary people. The weary are those who are overwhelmed by life at times, overwhelmed by life's burdens, overwhelmed by life's disappointments, overwhelmed by life's sorrows, overwhelmed by life's losses. But Jesus has an instructed tongue. He has been instructed by Abba, Father. Scripture says he was a a good shepherd, that he had compassion upon those who were harassed and helpless because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he said, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will raise up laborers for the harvest is so plentiful and the laborers are few. The weary are those who are overwhelmed with the burdens of life, disappointments, and sorrows. But Jesus has that instructed tongue to begin to reach deep into the human heart, deep into the human soul. Jesus becomes the word that sustains the weary. Again, look at verse 10. 
Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the word of his servant? Jesus is that word. He speaks the word, and he is the word of God made flesh. Sometimes just saying, Jesus, Jesus, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what step is next. I don't know what to do here in this situation. But Jesus, 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 Jesus. There's a Jewish woman uh, who is a Christian who was in here this morning, and her husband was in the band. And she asked us, she said, what, 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 is, what is this here? Is that Yeshua? And I said, yes, Yeshua means Yahweh is salvation. But she, was, she, she knew how to read a little bit of the Hebrew. And we had an interesting discussion. Her name was Laura. She's, uh, she knows the Lord, but she couldn't help but notice. And then she noticed that we were putting bread on the table. And as a little girl, she remembered the fellowship offering that is present in all of the Jewish synagogue services where they... Pass out bread to one another, very similar to uh, what we do in communion, very similar, not identical, but very similar. But it was interesting to see that. But the name Yeshua means Yahweh will save, Yahweh will heal, and God purposely gives Jesus his name. You give him the name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. But Jesus has this instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. Jesus is that word that sustains the weary. But also it says here that he wakens me. He wakens me. This speaks of a revival, really. It speaks of an awakening. We get up in the morning and we go through the routines of life. But scripture speaks of a deep wake-up call. Great awakenings in New England are famous. Jonathan Edwards. We are, how many of you know that we are in need of a great awakening? God will use circumstance and situation. It's very possible if you read Cora's email that God is calling us, as well as the church, Lou Engel is calling us to a three-day fast to seek the Lord. And the very one who is desiring to destroy Israel in the book of Esther is hung on the gallows that he himself built to destroy the leaders in Israel. God will use circumstance and and situation to bring awakening to us and to give us a heart of compassion for people. I don't know why when a strong witness of the Holy Spirit comes to me that I cry. I don't know why. I'm clueless. But I just go with the flow. I get on the canoe, and I go on the river, and I'm giving Jesus a green light. Why do I cry? Who knows? Am I a wounded individual who's just so decrepit that every time the Spirit touches me, all I can do is cry tears of self-pity? The Lord told me, no, no. It's not just about you here. It's something else. Something much deeper. The deep witness of the Holy Spirit is going to prove to be crucial in every man and woman's life. To discern when God is speaking. To discern the voice of the Spirit will make or break your life. Say, wake me up anytime, Lord. He wakens me morning by morning. Hello. Hello. Is anybody home? Say, Lord, I'm listening. I'm listening, Lord. Lord, I, I have a little bit of a problem with the box leaving the church. You know, I don't understand why a church already so small is going to be deprived of some of its most wonderful people. And all of us are wonderful to be sure. Why, 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 why is that, Lord? And you just, just, just wait. And, and then you learn to do this my way. It'll be a double blessing. Learn my ways. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me was the word that sustains the weary. Come unto me, all of you that are weary, heavy laden, and I will give you my rest. Take my yoke upon you. Put it on you, and that's, that yoke keeps you in double yoke fellowship with Jesus. Jesus is the big ox. We're the little ox. We ain't going anywhere unless Jesus starts to move. I always remember being out at uh, the, the beautiful Sturbridge Village. And the Lord was teaching us these things. And there were the, the two, two oxes, 
The uh, Silas was one of them, and, and the small one, I forget the small ox's name, but there was Silas, this big ox, and, and the guy who was dressed up in the garb of two, three hundred years ago said, the big ox knows that he can dominate the small ox. The small ox knows that he's not going anywhere until the big ox moves, but the big ox trains the small ox. He has to learn, and it's the double yoke. Jesus calls us into this double yoke that we ain't going anywhere until the big ox, Jesus, moves. That's why the scripture says this, shows us around this throne of God, there's a lion, there's an ox, there's an eagle, and there's one like the man. The ox is a very powerful symbol of moving mountains. If you have a team of oxen, you can move anything. But one of my favorite symbols in, in the scripture But Jesus wakens us. The Lord wakens us morning by morning. The crises of our nation right now, how much more of a wake-up call do we need? Our nation has never been more divided. If you voted for the current president, you have to pray for him, not just jump on the criticism bandwagon. It's easy to do. Criticize anyone. Barack Obama criticized uh, Donald Trump. I happen to think he has a little problem with impulsiveness, but that's okay. Sometimes I'm impulsive too. So I look at him and I say, this man needs my prayers. So boom, I'm down on the ground praying for him. It's easy to criticize anybody. But we need to pray for Donald Trump. This is an incredible moment. I know all of you believe it's a miracle that he was elected. So we have to pray. He wakens us morning by morning to listen The secret to knowing the word that sustains the weary is listening ear that God will give by his spirit. Not to crush people, not to point out people's failures and condemn them. All have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Look at Jeremiah. Uh, In the midst of the book of Lamentations, book of Lamentations is about Lamentations. The city of Jerusalem was destroyed. And I believe he was speaking this. We, we sing the wonderful hymn, Great is thy faithfulness. It should be in a minor key, really, but it come out of that. But in the midst of his crying, in the midst of his weeping, this is what Jeremiah says. And he knows the word that sustains the weary. Lamentations, which is right after the gargantuan book of Jeremiah. Little Lamentations, five chapters. He says a beautiful thing. Look at this, verse 19 of Lamentations 3. I remember my affliction, my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. It's a psalm, a quote of a psalm, Psalm 42. Yet this I call to mind. In this in the midst of the destruction of Jerusalem, terrible tragedy beyond words. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of Yahweh, Yahweh, because of Yahweh's four capital letters for Lord means Yahweh is behind that. Because of the Lord's great love, chesed, we are not consumed for his compassions. They never fail. They are new every morning. Remember, he wakens me morning by morning. They are new every single morning. Somebody asks you what's new today, tell them God's love is new today. Because the Bible says, even, even though my girlfriend has left me, and even though they leave the drums a total wreck, God's love is new every morning. What's new, Scott? Well, I'm on my seventh day of antibiotics, but God's love is new every morning. God's love is new no matter how I feel, no matter how the drainage is coming from my nasal passages, no matter how I hate colds. I hate colds, let me tell you. How many of you hate colds? And the longer they linger, the more you hate them. But the Lord says, I'm with you in the midst of it. I may not always take your cold away when you want me to, but I am with you through this cold. Learn how to discern my presence when you don't feel good. And I will be with you. The the absence of... Uh, excuse me, the presence of pain is not the absence of love. One of the great quotes from the shack. The presence of pain does not mean the absence of love. We have to learn that. I have to learn it. 
But Jeremiah, in the midst of it, he says, they are new every morning, verse 23, great gadol emunitaka. Great is thy faithfulness. We sing it occasionally. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. But it is through the veil of tears. Look at what he's building himself up. It's a word of God here. Verse 31 of Lamentations 3. For men are not cast off forever by the Lord. Though he brings grief, he will show rachamim, compassion, a precious Hebrew word. So great is his unfailing love. And then look at verse 49. My eyes will flow unceasingly without relief until the Lord looks down from heaven and sees. I don't think Jeremiah always had control. He's called the weeping prophet. Jeremiah is rightfully called the weeping prophet. I don't believe he could always control the weeping. Sometimes the sorrow, the weeping would come upon him, and the Lord would say, let it flow. Let it flow, Jeremiah. Sometimes it would be private. Sometimes it could be public, though. You just let it flow, let it flow. Let the tears flow. Let the intercession for others flow. But in the midst of it here, great is thy faithfulness through the veil of tears. Gadola munateka, rabba munateka, rabba munateka, rabba munateka, munateka, rabba munateka, rabba munateka, rabba munateka, munateka. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, O Lord my God. That's great is thy faithfulness in Hebrew in a minor key. It always takes the Jewish people to get us back to reality, get us back. And Jesus is a Jew, to be sure. But, um, and, and then, of course, I just want to, don't want to take all day here, and I know you guys are so patient and compassionate here. You love God's word. And next here, we see that the revelation of the cross and the crucible that so often comes to the Lord's servant. Obadiah is an interesting prophet, but as we look at Obadiah, literally means God's obedient servant. Obadiah is just a one-chapter book, and it's a very interesting character. To be sure, there's not a lot about him. But the, the Lord's servant, the word servant is abadah, abed, which means someone who obeys the Lord, who listens to the Lord and will obey him. And, and we see the word servant, of course, used here, abed, which makes it, it truly one of the servant songs. But look at the revelation of the cross. These are incredible revelations of the cross of Jesus. Look at from the Isaiah text, Isaiah 56. I offered my back to those who beat me. Now, who does that remind you of? Is that a snapshot of Jesus or not? Surely there was something going on in Isaiah's day. Perhaps it was true of Isaiah. Perhaps he experienced this. But King David said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? David was going through some hellish experience. But then Jesus quotes King David, Psalm 22, verse 1, at the cross and brings it to fulfillment and says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The revelations of the cross and the crucible that so oftentimes come to the servants of the Lord because they're doing something new. They're going against the status quo. They're saying, I'm not going to give in to the spirit of darkness of this world. I'm not going to yield to depression. I'm not going to do it. Jesus is going to deliver me from this pit. He's going to raise me out. And look at what it says. I offered my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. And the, the, the third, I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Here's previews of the cross of Jesus. Now, turn with me to Luke 18.31. Fast forward to one of the Gospels. We could take an hour doing this, but just one verse will, will suffice here. One verse, Luke 18.31. Jesus took the 12 aside and told them, we are going up to Jerusalem. And everything that is written by, about me in the prophets, right here in Isaiah 50, everything that is written about me in the prophets, 
uh, about the Son of Man will be fulfilled, that is Jesus. He will be handed over to the Gentiles, the Romans, Pontius Pilate. They will mock him, insult him, spit on him, flog him, and kill him. And on the third day, he will rise again. Jesus got that information from Isaiah 50. He studied it. The Spirit of God witnessed to him. Perhaps he wept. Perhaps he cried. Perhaps he danced up and down. But the Spirit of God witnessed to him that this is about Jesus. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face. He does this for you and I. He does this for you and I. You and I could not have withstood the ferocious nature of the hatred of this world. You and I could not have withstood it. We would have caved into it. So oftentimes we cave into the lies of the enemy, the lies and the deceitfulness of Satan, the accuser of their brethren. But there's so much else here. But look at the unshakable trust and confidence in the servant of the Lord, of, by the servant of the Lord in Yahweh, Yahweh, Adonai. Look at what it says here in verse 9. It is the sovereign Lord, Adonai, Yahweh, names we can trust. It is the sovereign Lord who helps me. Who is it will who will condemn me? They will all wear out like a garment. The temporal nature of our sufferings needs to be underlined. The temporal nature of this day that we are living in, in between the already and the not yet when Jesus will reign on the world. They will all wear out like a garment. The moths will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord, stands in awe of God, not man, what man can do? And who will obey the word of his servant, Jesus? Let him who walks in the dark, darkness of this world, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall not be lost in the darkness. He shall have the light of life. Let him who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God. Total reliance upon the Lord. And thank God that we have each other. We're a fellowship. John Sanders reminded me of when uh, Christian Renewal Church and Church of the Redeemer came together in an embrace. And we were lost in each other. It was a unique moment. We were at Iris Walker's house and we were at a variety of different locations, and we were praying through. We were walking through a difficult transition. Uh, we were meeting in Raleigh there at Iris' house. I remember so well, Justin Smith, our son, broke his leg at one of those meetings. We had to rush him to the hospital. Oh, no, second time Justin breaks his leg. Unforgettable moment. The crucible of all that was going on, and here we're running Justin to the hospital because he was on his roller blades and broke his leg in the streets of Raleigh. How many of you remember that were there when that happened? Unforgettable moments. But the Lord is helping us walk through transitional moments and whatever the Lord does is going to be good. And we cannot live in fear of the circumstance or the situation, but stand in awe of the Lord. Simple PowerPoints. Number one, Jesus is the revelation of the Father's heart to us to sustain us in weary times. We learn to fix our eyes upon Jesus. Beautiful lines in the movie when Mackenzie is being healed of his broken heart. Jesus says to him, keep your eyes on me. Keep your eyes on me. And Mackenzie learns how to walk on water. <laughs> it's really cool. Really a beautiful scene in the movie. I just spoiled a little bit there for you, so forgive me. How many of you forgive me? Anybody? Forgive me? Okay. Jesus is the revelation of the Father's heart to us. Did you ever think of Abba Father having scars in his hands, in his feet, in his side? Abba Father bears the scars that Jesus bears as well. Where was Father God when Jesus was dying at the cross? Abba Father was being crucified as well. Second PowerPoint, worshipful trust in the Lord is our calling. Not just singing songs, writing new songs, endless song. It's trust, worshipful trust is our calling. Number three, out of that worshipful trust will flow a loving obedience instead of bitterness. 
out of the worshipful trust, the test of the worshipful trust is the loving obedience. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. We learn how to study the word of God. Look at the life of Joseph, the patriarch, sold by his brothers into slavery. Look at the life of King David, the sorrows and difficulties, the mistakes he made, the sins he committed, but God's redemption. Look at the life of Moses. Moses was a stutterer. He couldn't speak, couldn't talk. He needed a lot of help from the Lord. Look at Paul, spent more time in prison than, than we can imagine. The suffering church of our day, your struggles, my struggles. We learn to cling to the Lord in the midst of those things. We study the word of God and see that some of God's most unique servants struggled and found the grace of God to be sufficient for them in their trials. Well, Abba, Father, we humble our hearts before you. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, that you join us. You are the wounded healer. You are the wounded healer. You join us, O oh Lord. Abba, Abba, Abba. You join us. You bear the scars that your son bears as well. Abba, 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 Father, you are with us. Jesus, you are with us. We fix our eyes upon you. Holy Spirit, you show us the Father and the Son, and we bless and magnify your name. But those who are feeling called to fast for three days, receive that calling deep into their hearts right now. The Esther fast to pray for the President of the United States and the crises of our nation, the division and the strife. The voices of those who come up against our president and try to have him removed from office. Lord, we pray that we could fast and we could pray and we could be effective, Lord, for our nation at this hour. For Christian Renewal Church, Lord, for every family here, Lord, for every individual here, Abba Father. Lord, we, we want our church to become a church of outreach, of caring for people teaching people how to trust in the Lord, worshipful trust. Lord, for the woman who was here this morning after the Nazarene service and wanted to know about our Jewish connections, bless her as I gave her a copy of Our Father Abraham. Lord, bless her as she reads. Lord, may we trust in the name of the Lord. Trust in the name of the Lord. Trust in the name. Let him who walks in darkness Trust in the name of the Lord and let the Lord be his light. Lord, bring your healing grace and strength into each and every heart, Abba Father. Thank you for that which you are doing. Christ above us, Christ beneath us, Christ to the right of us, Christ to the left of us, Christ in front of us, Christ behind us, and Christ within us. Lord, Lord I lift up. It was nice to get a, a greeting this morning from a telephone call asking me how I was doing. Lord, bless, keep him safe on the, on the motorcycle that's uh, going to be ready for driving at some point in time. Keep him safe. Keep him strong. Lord, I had that dream once that going to be walking down the aisles of this church and he was going to start to run because the yoke of darkness over him had been broken. And the freedom felt so good. <laughs> Lord, for so many people who are used to walking in darkness, shrouded in suffering and strangling in darkness. Jesus, you want to set us free. Set us free, dear Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord. You sustain our church, Lord, for your purposes and your time. In Jesus' precious name, everyone said amen. Amen. God bless you.